So, you're going to set off cruising with your kids. But if you've never taught before, what do you need to know about home, or maybe I should say boat, schooling? Well, hello there. I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share advice from a primary school teacher turned cruiser that will help you gain confidence as a new teacher. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Mantis Marine, maker of the Mantis Anchor, now available in models with and without a roll bar. Proven to set reliably in the most challenging bottoms, the Mantis Anchor digs in like no other, making anchoring safer and boating more enjoyable. Mantis Marine brings to market practical, durable, and affordable marine products, including anchoring gear, scuba diving accessories, and a rechargeable waterproof headlamp for hands-free lighting. I absolutely love that headlamp. Visit mantismarine.com and see for yourself. Okay, let's talk a little bit about boat schooling. And if you're a parent, okay, I don't have kids, so I couldn't actually give any of this advice. But I turned to one of our readers, Emily Nankalas, and she is a former teacher turned cruiser, and this is her advice. I'm reading it, but it's Emily's words, okay? Basically, it's not easy for cruising parents to become teachers, especially if they've never done it before. However, I will say the exceptional young people that we've met while cruising, it is well worth the effort. Okay, says Emily, in the end, kids won't remember the fancy things you bought them. They'll remember the time you spend with them. Says Emily, as a primary school teacher for over 12 years, I thought I had seen and done it all. I've taught in hats and gloves when the eating broke in the middle of winter. I've taught outside during a huge thunderstorm. I've even taught from halfway up a climbing wall, though I'd be lying if I said it was one of my most coherent lessons. But the one thing I had never even considered was teaching on a boat. When I left the classroom for my own adventure, I didn't expect to see families teaching their kids from the boats. Although on sabbatical, the teacher and me couldn't help but get involved. I had so many questions. How did teaching on a boat work? And how did parents, with no teaching experience at all, managed to juggle sailing and boat school. Well, it turned out I wasn't the only one with questions. While living aboard my new-to-be sailboat, I exchanged my teaching knowledge for much-needed sailing and boat maintenance advice. I discovered a whole host of families feeling understandably overwhelmed by the pressures that teaching from a boat brings. They were, shall we say, lost at sea when it came to boat school. While I enjoyed teaching boat kids their lessons every week, my teaching experience was most useful for the parents. When we all left for summer sales, the boat school parents would have to feel their way through teaching, things that had taken me years of training and practice to understand. Many things that seemed obvious to me as a teacher caused worry and frustration for boat school parents. Questions ranged from education-based queries such as, why isn't my child retaining their spelling, to more admin-based dilemmas, how to fit teaching around sailing, or how to teach on longer passages. Since moving aboard, I have worked with numerous boat school families, both with parents and children. I've built up a good understanding of the unique challenges that boat school brings. It's been exciting to work on finding solutions to their problems, and even more exciting to see the children flourish because of the changes. Says Emily, here's my five tips for boat schooling primary aged kids. Now, first, children don't have to sit at a table with a pencil in hand to be learning. I'd go so far as to say this is when they're learning the least, especially when they're younger. Wherever possible, take your boat school outside. As a trained forest school leader, I taught many lessons in the woods. I've since adapted my training to teaching on the beach, and I've spent several winters with a classroom of children roaming the sandy shores in search of buried treasure, 
building rafts and floating and sinking materials experiments, making bug hotels, and discovering how fire is made while toasting marshmallows and telling campfire stories. Learning through doing is one of the most effective ways of teaching. Room might be tight for resources on board, but you'll find most tools you need outside. So take your teaching onto the beach or even into the cockpit, and you'll all enjoy boat school more. The second thing, don't over-school. When children go to school all day, they're really only learning for a fraction of that time. There's so many distractions in a classroom, and although it might seem as though they're concentrating for a full day, they honestly aren't. They're chatting to their friends when the teacher's looking the other way, or they're gazing out the window at the kids playing sports outside. They might even be seeing how far they can put a pencil up their nose. When you teach children one-on-one, -on -one, their attention just doesn't wander because you're right there nagging them to get on. This means their learning time is concentrated compared to a normal school day. Keep your teaching time to a few hours maximum, depending on the age of the child. If you try and teach for a whole day, your children will end up completely exhausted, and so will you. Now, number three is that kids learn slowly. Now, every child is different, but on the whole, kids learn slowly. I understand it's frustrating when you taught them something just a few days ago and now they don't remember it. But teaching is all about overlearning and overlearning again. Think about babies and how they're happy dropping things on the floor over and over. You're bored after the first few goes, but for them, it's endlessly entertaining. They need to repeat the task many times before they've learned it. It's the same for your kids when they're learning something new. They might have been able to add together five and five last week, but they need to try it every day in many different ways until they really understand how to do it. Use objects, give them the task and word problems, act it out. You get the idea. The fourth is getting creative. A common problem I come across when it comes to boat school is that children simply aren't enjoying their education. A lot of homeschool curriculums can be dry if delivered straight from the book. They have to be, to be designed for anyone to teach them, and they lack a lot of what makes teaching and learning fun. If your child isn't enjoying school, then it's time to change things up. No one learns when they're bored. There's easy ways to adapt the program you're following to spark your child's passions and learning preferences. Decide on a topic together, for example. Give them a choice of several themes like the rainforest, knights and castles, or space. Then design lessons around the theme. A lesson on measuring can become a design technology lesson where you build a castle to specific measurements. A lesson on adjectives can be come drawing an imaginary planet and using adjectives to describe it. And finally, number five, be kind to yourself. I've had the opportunity to see firsthand the benefits of bringing children up on a boat. And if I'm lucky enough to have children of my own, says Emily, I wouldn't hesitate to school them on board. Children attending school on a boat have the world as their classroom. As teachers, you have so many perfect opportunities to encourage hands-on, practical learning that will teach children so much more than they could ever learn inside a classroom-based environment. Remember, though, you can't be a perfect teacher all the time. There will be plenty of times that you're short-tempered or that your child looks at you blankly when you try to explain something the third time. Perhaps you feel you simply can't be bothered. If you're having a bad teaching day, then just be kind to yourself. Take a step back. Let them watch an educational channel on YouTube or give them a simple art or construction task while you have a much needed cup of tea and a cookie. More than a perfect teacher, kids need a real parent. And real parents need breaks from their teacher day job. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Boat Galley podcast and learned something, particularly if you're planning to take kids or even grandkids aboard. Please subscribe so that you never miss an episode and tell your friends about us. <laughs>